We good? Hey, Jimmy. All hey. right, there we go. Hey, sorry, we lost you there. All good? All right, okay, so let's pick up where we left. How have you been keeping yourself busy during quarantine? Oh, man, just uh, taking care of the family, spending time with the family, and training as much as possible. You were born and raised in Oklahoma. Are you still living there now? Yes, sir. Uh Grew up here, um, but at 17, I moved to Corpus Christi, Texas, uh, and that's when I got into Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and by the time I turned 18, I started fighting as an amateur. What, do you have a dream car? Say it again. have a dream car? A dream car? Man, off the top of my head, no. I mean, uh, I would just like to have a better vehicle than the one I have. I have a piece of crap truck. <laughs> so you're a big commission guy. What? Did just getting into this um, jiu-jitsu, was it just that, or did you just really end up liking it after doing it? Uh, I wrestled my whole life, and when I got into jiu-jitsu and started training jiu-jitsu, I just fell in love with it. Uh, I'm really good at it. Uh, I love being on my back. I love being on top, and uh, I just it's something that flew really good with me and my style, and I've been after it ever since. So how has it been like fighting on the regional circuit in or now being in the LFA? But how was it being in the regional circuit before that? Oh, it was great, man. Um, I made more money fighting on the regional circuit than I did in the uh, bigger companies because uh, I sold so many tickets. I got a lot of fans locally. So when I fight locally on the regional circuit, I get paid a lot more money for selling a bunch of tickets. Um, but I've fought in three different states. I've uh, fought for multiple different companies, uh, mainly all over Texas is where my career started. Um, and then I moved back to Oklahoma, and I've got a big fan base here in Oklahoma and uh, sell a lot of tickets here locally when I fight local. So on Dana White Contender Series, you know, guys have gone on there and gotten finishes. You get a lot of finishes, and some have not got a contract. Are you looking to go out there and, you know, bang and possibly put on a show and win and get the contract, or are you just more worried about winning at the end of the day? Uh, at the end of the day, you want Dana on his feet, and that's what I want. But I, I train to do one thing and one thing only. Like and we lost you again, Jimmy. All right, there we are. Yeah, I guess my phone – like, every time it just goes black, it cuts off, so I'm going to have to just keep tapping the volume button while my phone don't cut me off. I don't you understand like it. I've never had this problem. What kind of phone do you have? I have a iPhone 11. Wow. Yeah, just okay. every time, like, after a second, it goes black, and the next thing I know, it's cut off. Like, I don't know. So I'm going to just keep pressing the button Why I don't have to worry about that. <laughs> So what are your favorite hobbies outside of fighting? Man, unfortunately, I do not have none. Um, with two kids and a wife and uh, working and training all the time, training and fighting would have to be my hobby. Uh, I get asked that question a lot, so uh, I've never really been able to come up with an answer. So fighting is my hobby, my dream, and everything I do outside of working and hanging out with my family. you got to fight all the time to be the best. How old are your kids? I got a three-year-old little girl and an eight-year-old little girl. So how how long do you train? Do you train two times a day? Yes. Uh, on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I do CrossFit uh, from 6 to 7 in the morning before I go to work. And then I work from 8 to 3.30 before I get off and go to the gym. And uh, some days when I get off work, I'll come home and I have my little – I have a gym at my house. And I'll work some out, work out at my house sometimes, um, why I can get home to my family a lot quicker. But I spend four days a week at the gym. Sometimes I don't get home until ten o'clock at night. So you said you did wrestling growing up. Any other sports? Big football guy? No. Oh yeah, I've played football. I played baseball. I even raced bikes for a while. Did BMX. Uh, I, I've done just about anything, man. Um, I've done freestyle. I've done Greco wrestling as well. Uh, played basketball. Um, I was a very competitive kid and very athletic, and my dad always kept me in sports. Okay. Do you have any – who's your favorite athlete? Uh, my favorite athlete is actually uh, Donald Cowboy uh, Cerrone. 
Uh, I love Cowboy. I lived at his house a couple times. Uh, I just love the guy's grind. Um, I was there when he had the tap out house um, like 10 plus years ago. Uh, and I just, I, I just love that guy's style, his attitude, and the way he lives life. Yeah, a lot of fighters love going out there on the BMF ranch. How do you feel about his upcoming fight against Nico Price at welterweight? I think it's a great fight for him. Uh, I'm excited to see it, and I'm excited to see him get back to his winning ways. I feel like he won the Anthony Pettis fight, but when the fights go to the decision, you never know how it's going to go. Um, I've had only three of my 19 pro fights go to a decision, and I had one go bad for me when I dominated the whole fight. And Ever since, I have not been back to the scorecards. That's why you see so many finishes on my record. Are there any big main events you're looking out for this year? A lot of main events have been announced recently. I don't know if you've seen them. Oh, yeah, man. There's so many of them. I, I, you know, I hope Justin Gaethje and Khabib happen. Um, there's the Colby Covington versus Tyron Woodley. Man, they just go on and on, man. So, and then Alessania versus Costa. Like, I'm excited for what's coming up, and I'm hoping to, you know, get this win September 1st on the Tuesday Night Contender and possibly be able to jump on one of these big cards. I mean, you're a champion. You win a contract. I think they're going to have five votes for pushing. And speak, are, you're still going to fight at flyweight. Are you going to do bantamweight or just flyweight? Uh, I prefer to stay at flyweight. Uh, bantamweight, I'm not a big bantamweight. I can make bantamweight on 24 hours notice if needed. Um, if the UFC calls for that, I mean, it's going to be hard to say no, but I would like to stay active and stay at flyweight where I belong. How do you feel about the upcoming flyweight title fight between Davis and Figueredo and Cody Garber? Uh, I think it's a smart move on the UFC. Um, the flyweight division was starting to fall off. And then uh, Figueroa almost messed it up by missing weight. And then he got the rematch and took out Benavidez again. I think them bringing in Cody is going to bring a bigger fan base uh, for the flyweight division. So I'm super excited about it. So after September 1st, if everything goes well, how soon are you hoping to jump back in? Y'all could go. Uh, man, that's, it, it's a tough one to say, man, because uh, I'm just coming off of a fight July 24th. Uh, in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. I also fought in February. So I've already had two fights this year. This one was a quick turnaround. Uh, I was only is nine days, I think, or maybe 12 days out, out of my LFA title fight, and I got the call for this fight. So uh, we were back-to-back -back training camps. Uh, if I could get a six-week training camp, that would be amazing after winning the title. Uh, or after winning the contract, I would like to get a six-week camp set up. But, you know, when they call, you can't say no. Who's your favorite UFC fighter? Oh, Cowboy for sure. Any other UFC fighters to look out for? I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I love the sport, man. Uh, I love Al Sonya, what he's been doing right now. He's a great fighter. Um, but the list goes on and on. I mean, look at Frankie Edgar. I love Frankie Edgar. Uh, he used to be the lightweight champ. Now he's fighting at Bantamweight, where he probably should have been a long time ago. So uh, I love Frankie Edgar, too, especially after last week and his performance. Have you gotten really any days off since your title fight? I know you said 12 days of contest, but did you really take any days off? It was a quick – I mean, you beat him 38 seconds. It was real quick. Did you go straight back to the gym after that? Yeah, we were right back in the gym Monday. Um doing sprints and uh, getting work in with our other teammates. Um, I did take a few days off uh, from here or there, and then I also uh, ended up having a tooth pulled uh, about, you know, a week after the fight. That put me out for a few days, but uh, shortly after that, we were back to training camp. So you said you joined, you joined the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu gym, and that's how you got into MMA. What made you, or what, what made you, just, what made you want to fight? Overall. Uh, growing up with two older brothers and two older sisters, I got beat up a lot. Um, my brothers beat me up a lot. I wrestled my whole life. And uh, at 17, I ended up dropping out of school. And my dad was stationed in Corpus Christi, Texas. And he was like, I'm moving you to Texas and I'm putting you in a gym because we watched fights all the time. And uh, 
that's what happened. And once I got in the gym, I just fell in love with it. And when I turned 18, I started fighting as an amateur and I went seven and zero as an amateur with seven finishes, six of them in the first round. And then I turned pro in Bellator 20 and I fought a guy that was six and two and I was O and O and they brought me in to lose to him. And I dominated him by unanimous decision. Do you have any places you'd like to live in the future, like dream places, or are you Oklahoma for life? Man, uh, me and my wife's always talked about it. We'd love to travel the world, uh, especially when our kids get older, since we had kids at such a young age. Uh, me and my wife have been married for eight years, going on nine. Like I said, I have an eight-year-old, and I have a three-year-old. So, you know, we'll still only be in our 40s. So hopefully this career takes me a long ways, and – we're able to travel the world uh, once our kids go off to college. You got a job fighting. What's your job? What do you do? Uh, actually, I'm very uh, fortunate for the job I have. I work in the plastic industry, and uh, I cut plastic all day. Uh, we've been very busy during this pandemic. Uh, never missed a day of work throughout this whole pandemic. And uh, leading up to this fight is the first time I'm actually going to have some days off. Uh, I'll be heading out to Vegas in a couple days to do all my media and I'll be out there until fight night. So, um, I run a huge CNC saw and I cut plastic and material all the time. So what were the quarantine protocols for fighting? Like how many coronavirus tests did you have to take? I know UFC fighters did like five before a fight, maybe six. How many did you have to do? Uh, when I did the LFA fight, I only had to do one. When I got up there um, the day before weigh-ins, and then I know the UFC, I will be doing two uh, or three for the Tuesday Night Contender. When I come in on Tuesday, they're going to give me the test, and then I'm locked down until I get the results. And then when I, I have to move hotels and do a bunch of stuff, and uh, then I'll get another test, and then uh, they might even test me again the day of weigh-ins. I'm not quite sure, but... It, I know I'm getting two tests for sure when I come in on the Tuesday night contender. How is the quarantine like in Texas? Are the kids going to school or is it online classes? Yeah, my eight-year-old is going to be doing online for the first nine weeks. Uh, they just figured that out. Um, they weren't quite sure. We went and met the teacher the other day, and then two days later we got the email saying that we're going to be doing virtual schooling. And she actually starts um, the day before my fight. You have any favorite childhood memories growing up? Say it again. Any favorite childhood childhood memories growing up? Oh, man, yeah. I got tons of them. Uh, I knocked my teeth out at a young age. Um, my whole front mouth is fake from knocking my teeth out. Um, I've cut my legs open racing BMI, BMX bike. I've had stitches all over my body. Um, my memories go on and on as a kid. I, I've wrestled my whole life and I even went to Reno, Nevada when I was nine years old and wrestled out in Reno, Nevada. That was one of the coolest experiences as a kid and, uh, just been a crazy rambunctious kid my whole life. So how has your life been since being a father? Uh, it's changed me a lot and made me really, uh, nickel down on what I need to do for my life and what I need to do for my kids. Uh, I've put my career on hold a couple times to find a job, which I have now that provides me with benefits and a 401k. Uh, I, I'm very luckily, lucky, luckily have what I have. I, I own my house. Uh, I have two and a half acres. Uh, honestly, I, I don't have to fight if I don't want to, but it, it's what I love to do. And it's a dream that I want to come true, and after winning the LFA title, I'm one step closer to getting to the UFC and winning that contract. Well, have you got to meet Dana White yet, or are you going to meet him when you get there in Vegas? Uh, I've actually met him once before. Uh, I was an alternate on the season 18 of The Ultimate Fighter, um, and I got to meet him then, and I told him I was there for my opportunity, and I wish I would have got to fight in front of him. But unfortunately, that season, nobody missed weight when I was there until after they sent me home. They paid me $750, so I still have that check stub from Ultimate Fighter Season 18. So I've met him once before, but this is going to be my first opportunity to fight in front of him and show him what I can really do. 
Should college, do you think college athletes should get paid? That is a what the fuck question of the day. <laughs> Man, uh, yeah, I think so, man. Uh, I don't know how much they should be get paid, but uh, I think it would be nice for college athletes to get paid. But then again, I think that uh, it might hurt the sport a little bit. Uh, if they, they did get paid, they uh, they probably not going to, you know, really go to college and focus on their degree and stuff like that. I think that's why they don't get paid. Um, but I'm pretty sure a lot of them still do get paid, and uh, but some of them get caught when they do. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say Zion got caught. I mean, why should we pay him? Like you said, a lot of them already do get paid illegally. A lot. Exactly. And then what's the point of going to college and trying to get a degree or whatever you're trying to do? Like fighters, man, we, we get paid because that's what we do. And uh, – we don't have, some of us don't have degrees. Like I didn't graduate growing up. I don't have a degree. I, I don't have none of that. So it, I worked really, really hard to get where I'm at now in life. Um, I took the long road to get to the, where my job is. And I took the long road to get to the UFC and, uh, I'm still chasing the UFC, but I've been in the sport for over a decade. I turned pro when I was, I believe 19 years old. I might've been 20 years old when I turned pro. But I've been in this sport for a decade, and uh, it's took me a long time to get there. Do you think Kanye has a good chance in the election this year? Uh, no, not really. I think it's a publicity stunt to kind of help out Trump with the black votes. Um, but um, you never know. I mean, nobody really thought Trump was going to win either. Are you a big Marvel or DC fan? No, unfortunately I'm not. Are you a big movie guy in general? Uh, I, I like to watch funny movies. Um, here lately, though, uh, I don't get to watch TV anymore. Um, I, I try to watch some shows with my wife here and there, but the kids most of the time have their girl movies on and stuff like that. I don't even get to play my PlayStation 4. I basically say I got a $400 DVD player because my kids use it to watch movies more than anything. Anymore? Any good recommendations for TV shows? Just the ones that you made us all? My favorite show is uh, Shameless. I love watching Shameless, The Ozark, and uh, just whatever my wife puts me on to. Um, like I said, I haven't even watched TV probably since before the LFA fight. Um, I'd be training all the time, and I feel that 2020 is the time. So I've been focused on training, working, and spending time with my family. What's your favorite food? Pizza. Pepperoni pizza is my favorite. And I, I got a little pizza after my fight, but then we were right back to training camp, and uh, I've been craving it every, ever since. You have a favorite pair of shoes? You a Nike guy? Uh, yeah, that's, I was going to say, yeah, probably Nike or Adidas. That's what I got. Um, I got a couple pair of Nikes and a couple pair of Adidas. Um, um, my wife even gets me some Converse. I like Converse. And uh, actually, my favorite pair of shoes actually would be Dudes. I don't know if you heard of Dudes yet, but they're real nice slip on shoes and they're on their way up. They're not really uh, running shoes or nothing, but they're nice, good dress shoes or just your, you know, wear around the house kind of shoes. What do you think about the Mike, upcoming Mike Tyson fight against Rory Jones Jr.? Man, it's tough to say, man. I Honestly, I don't think it'll ever happen. Um, I know Ru Jones Jr. is already talking about not doing it. And, uh, but, I mean, I, I love Mike Tyson, so anytime he fights, I want to watch. You're from Oklahoma. I know you're a big sports fan, man. Come on. Tell me you're a sports fan, Jimmy. A what fan? Hello? What? Yeah, what kind of fan? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. What kind of fan did you say? I said a sports fan. Oh yeah, I'm a big sports fan. I love I love wrestling. I even love watching the uh, the Oklahoma Thunder. I've been to a playoff game. Uh, I love football. I wish we had our own NFL team. Um, so yeah, I'm a huge sports fan. Baseball? Uh, baseball, not so much. Um, but uh, if I can go to a game and drink some beers. I love to go and w drink some beers and watch some baseball, but as for watching it on TV, not so much. Are you a big strength and conditioning guy or cardio? 
Uh, cardio has always been my number one aspect. Um, I did join CrossFit. I've been doing CrossFit for over two years now to help change up my game, and it's made a tremendous change for me and my cardio and my strength and conditioning. And uh, But I love to run. Uh, I probably run about 15 miles a week, if not more. And uh, my cardio has always been my main thing. Uh, I've tried. I'm not no good. Um, growing up, my dad wasn't into that. But my uh, father-in-law, we live on uh, 10 acres all together. And we uh, they hunt out here. And uh, I've tried, but I've never even got to shoot a deer. Every time I go hunting, I've never seen one. Um, but it's something that uh, I'm interested in learning throughout my life. What advice would you give to up and coming U.S. MMA fighters? Uh, don't give up, man. Uh, if it's something that you want to do, you really need to pursue it. Uh, you can't do it half ass. You really need to put everything, put your all into it, and never give up. So, a lot of people, including Joe Rogan, said that they think wrestling is the best place for MMA. How much does that help you? And you think it is the best place, or do you think striking or jiu-jitsu is better? What's your opinion? Oh, yes. I believe wrestling is the best base to start with. Um, I started with wrestling, then I transferred into jiu-jitsu, and now my striking. And that's why my nickname's The Brick. It's because my game's solid all over. But do you have a favorite book? Uh, no, I've never been a reader, man. Uh, not a book guy. Um, like I said, uh, school was not my favorite, and uh, I've just always been a sports guy. Any last words for us, Jimmy? Uh, just tune in September 1st on ESPN+. Plus. Watch me go earn this UFC contract and show the world what I'm about. I follow you at, on Twitter and Instagram. Yeah, my Twitter's <laughs> at Jimmy Flick. That's F-L-I-C-K. And my Instagram is the underscore brick underscore MMA. I also have a fan page on Facebook at Jimmy the Brick Flick. We'll leave him down below. Jimmy, thank you so much for joining the show. You're the best, man. Go win that fight. Thank you, man. I appreciate y'all having me on. Ladies and gentlemen and peoples of all spectrums and all that shit, welcome to today's episode of Off the Dome with your co-host, Brando Breezy, and your, your original ho-host, Kai Snickerson, what's up, baby? Yeah, that guy. So, <clears throat> how you been? I'm a good. How are you been? Ah, I'm all right. I'm all right. Life's fucking just, just terrible. And it's Kobe's birthday. That shit was sad. It is. Rest in peace to Kobe Bryant. That was a tragic. Rest in peace to his daughter, home, Sojiana. Tragic event that taken place on January 26th of 2020. One of the more shitty events of 2020. It's kind of shittier than COVID, if you want me to be honest with you. It, it, I ain't gonna like that. That shit, that, that shit cut me deep, that nigga Kobe dying. It, it fucked me all the way up. Like, yeah, man, it, was, it was some fucked up shit, man. <clears throat> yeah, RP to go. Um, damn, so, uh, for our, uh, what the fuck question of the day is, uh, should college athletes get paid? Fuck no. Why? Why do you feel that way? What? Why do they? Wait. Why? It's. You said it. Should college athletes get paid? Yeah. Should college athletes get paid? It's pretty funny. For doing their sport. Yeah, they are. They already get paid. <laughs> like oh, like how? How so? They do that shit illegally, bro. bro I, I'm telling you, some of these like. The, these five star recruits or whatever you want to call them, they getting that bread to go to some of these schools. Like it's really tragic that they're paying kids and people's fathers and stuff. They were like Zion paid your father like four hundred thousand for you to come here. I bet he was hurt. Oh, so there's there's been some scandals going on recently. Is that what you're saying? Shit, even Reggie Bush, should we know who that is? <clears throat> I do know who Reggie Bush is. He's not allowed to go back to a football player. Right? Yep. How old is that guy? Forty. 
he was banned. He went to hide the trophy, but they paid him. I think it was two hundred fifty thousand to go there. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So uh, there's a there's been some talk in the past between you, me, and some others about movies and them the originals and the the reboots and remakes. Yeah. So what <clears throat> what's your take on those? I feel like the originals always seem to be better. I don't know why. I just the remakes just never seem to just hit that target or just outdo themselves. Like really like a live action like what? It's like they just do stuff that just doesn't make sense. They tried to do a rush hour T V show. They did? They tried to do a rush hour it was a black guy and Asian? It was. That's kind of fucked up. It really was. I think it even went three seasons. Like, I was like, what the fuck? I mean, they made a TV show out of Lethal Weapon. And I watched that. Yeah, it, it was some heat, though. It was. It was, a family, <laughs> it was a family show. Like, that was fucking great. I didn't, like, it's so sad how fucked it. Like, I knew it wasn't going to get another season after that. What's probably the best remake you've seen in cinema? Why do I want to say it, even though I know... Uh, I mean, that that gives it a run for its money. I mean, the original is more practical. I like that. I like the practicality behind it. But, I mean, it is really... It's really phenomenal when you look at it. Like, when you haven't seen the original, you're like, yeah, this is fucking yeah. it. This is the fucking... The best fucking... But when you see, like, the original, when there's, like, a clown sitting in a whole library full of people mm-hmm. and he's just fucking with one dude and nobody else sees it. These balloons are coming down, there's blood splattering on these people's faces and they don't even know it's there. And it's just like the shit that like the movie could do. No, yeah, but I thought number two just, ooh, that one blew shit out of the water. I thought that was amazing. Yeah, so what was probably the worst remake you've seen in cinema? I don't even think it's come, it's come out, but that Mulan. Ooh. Mulan. Yeah, it just looked. <laughs> I didn't even see it. It just fucking looked. Racist. Yeah, it looked shitty. You're a fucking political correctness like, terrorist. Like, I'm even gonna go as far to say fucking Blade is gonna be shitty. Oh yeah, that's definitely gonna be shitty. <laughs> Wesley Snipes is in it. That <laughs> tax evading ass nigga ain't in it. What you mean? Who the fuck is in the blood? Uh, it's like. My Ali. <laughs> I don't know. It's it Marsh Marsh Sharma Ali. Yeah. It's um. She's not, not Wesley Snipes. <laughs> right. I mean, Wesley Snipes should at least have a <clears throat> a cameo, but for him to not that I mean that might fuck everything up. I'd like to see him in it. I'd like him to be like at least be Blade's dad or some shit. You know. Hey, Matrix Four. I think that's gonna be shitty. Yeah, I'm not even going to watch that. I didn't plan on watching that. I don't know why. But I think I'll watch Bill and Ted before I watch The Matrix. Yeah. I don't think too many people are planning on watching that. Well, yeah. I mean, if Lawrence Fishburne isn't going to be in it, I mean, hey, look, like, Keanu Reeves is a great actor. Don't get me wrong. I love, I like him as a person. I want to get rich and be like him. That guy yeah. is a phenomenal person in, like, at his heart. So, you know, like, I, I fucks with that. I fuck with I want to be like him one day. But, <clears throat> no, nah, I don't. I'm not, I like, I like John Wick, but I ain't going to tune the fuck into the Matrix. like all the different types of movies he's done. Yeah, but I'm not. He's very, like, he's he's very multi-genre. For sure. I can appreciate that. Like, a lot of, a lot of actors usually get typecast to one role, like a a rapey killer vibe or some (laughs) shit like that. I don't like it. Sad. Like black people usually get portrayed as like thugs and gangs. Yeah. movies. I mean it's it's fine. Yeah, you know, they, a TV show. I mean at least niggas is getting paid all the time. Like, shit. Like, but I mean hey, it works, bro. <laughs> it works. Like niggas are happy. Tune in like it's real. Maybe it is. Maybe it's not. <laughs> we'll never know. Hey, that's the little universe they're creating on screen that people watch, and people are like, ah, oh, there's a black, and then and then they make that the real life. It's like what the fuck? That shit's fake, motherfucker. <laughs> It is fake, maybe. Except cops. Cops is real. <laughs> you ever seen a nigga get his ass whooped on cops? That Bro, shit I didn't watch fake. that. And nigga didn't get his ass whooped. <laughs> mm. 
Yeah, no. Like, on Beyond Scared Straight and Cops, they should really stop swinging on them. Like, it just never, like, mm. Who, the, the, the people? The people, like, they always yeah, they just ass Like, like who the fuck be swinging on cops? Like, I remember the girl, she was, like, swinging, and, like, she swung so bad and just got swung. I was like, damn. Nice. Why? Yeah, some some people. I mean, you just got your day. One day, a motherfucker gonna get right with you. I mean, I like to swing on one, but I just feel like it's not gonna go the way. I, I mean, want it's to. not gonna go the way you want it to unless you knock that you motherfucker straight what, out. You don't know what the fuck. They might just haze your ass. They might even like, like they look at you before shit. you do it, and they just like some they of just them shoot just you. not go entertain. They gonna be like try, they, just, try they pepper that spray shit. your dumb ass, and that's that's worse. Yeah, for sure. I'd rather I just get tased. School, it was, it was, I was like, nope. You like, you know, know, even inhaling that shit could fuck you up. It's like, you don't want that shit in your face. Fucking, they started spraying people when they fought. Nope, I, I can't get that. <laughs> yeah, you gotta, yeah, I understand that shit'll break. And then they got the big ass cans of it too. You better fuck, her, fuck off. Don't get fucked up. Oh my God. So, remakes. What about games? You know, you, you've seen any games that were like old? And then they got brought back or, you know, even changed to make even. new or modern. Why can't I think of it? Unless, <laughs> fucking, I don't know if they've been making Sonic continue. Have they been making Sonic continually? I'm, I mean, Sonic has always been a game that's been continue? getting okay. made. They always make new Sonics, I believe. Like, every couple years or few, they try to keep it intact. But, hmm. um. Oh, no, yeah, I guess, like. Well, we'll destroy all humans, but like, there's more like. Right. So there, I know there's the SpongeBob rehydrated. Yeah. Uh, there's the Crash Bandicoot. There is uh, oh, destroy all humans, which is phenomenal. <laughs> and then there's what, what was it? Saints Row the Third remastered. Oh, yeah. Remastered. And then there's been like some. I mean, it's just you know they 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 just been. Fixing them up, they they're not like you know they're not remaking it. They're just re recreating it visually. Yeah. But I mean, you know that's that's the same as a remake. Same in my eyes. was yeah. very just disappointing once again. Yeah, I heard it made it worse. From yeah, an opinion, yeah. they just said it it was actually better untouched. I and mean, they're not gonna make a new Saints Row something. So oh no, they are. They have to. A Saints Row four five. Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, you gotta. Yeah, I mean, it's bound to happen. Every because they everybody's wanted a Saints Row. They came up with Agents of Mayhem, and that sort of flopped. So like, I don't know if you're familiar with Volition, but Volition is known for making Saints Row and other games. So Saints Row is like their priority game, and when they came out with not a Saints Row but a Agents of Mayhem, that was like a fuck you to the. That's what people perceived it as. I think Age of Mayhem was okay. I didn't didn't feel some type of. I didn't buy it. Like I I bought Saints Row like one, two, three, and four. Um, <coughs> yeah, Saints Row was the heat, even though it is you know it's it's very imaginary. So I don't understand you know. But when number five comes out, you can bet your 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 sweet ass. I'm gonna be the first one down there to fucking get that. I, I want to be. One. One of the first few, like, I'm not going to, like, do that special pre-order shit and, like, yeah. go to the, I'm not going to GameStop. Because I don't know if them niggas going to be around and Corona and shit. They're not going to do the midnight release party. But they like, hell no. They going to fucking Corona close down. And, a lot. Black Friday might get popping, though. Yeah, no. Might have to actually go steal some shit. Yeah, no, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't recommend that. But <laughs> for sure. if you do, like, grab me some shit. Tell me grab me Uh, for real. I told niggas to go... Last time, some of, my, some of my friends said they were going to boost some stuff. I was like, hey, you know, I don't condone you doing it. I don't condone people to, you know, commit crimes. But if you're going to do it and you plan on getting away, you know, might, might as well just grab me some shit in the process, right? You know, no harm, no foul. Just let me know when you got it. I'll slide and grab it. You know, everybody likes a little bit of free shit. Just little something, something. <laughs> yeah, for real. Just like, I'll, I'll give you a little dub. No matter. And you like, in Black Friday, you should be rushing it so it's like, when they rush them stores, like, I know they be like, oh, shit, who's finna steal, like? Yeah, they have cameras put up in special places so they can see, and then they have the only one, like, set of I doors open and shit. for that shit. Yeah, like, they stop letting both sides be open. They just let one be open. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> they lock they down. <laughs> yeah, they know people are gonna try to run in there and finesse their way out some shit. Smart people, like, uh, they don't sell, like, washer and dryers there, but if they did... You could uh, you could go there and like hide that shit in the 
in there beforehand. I mean, I'm pretty sure they have people now that go through and check and see if people hit shit because that's how you get the best deal. Yeah. But, no, I mean, they, somebody could just catch you outside and run you over and steal your stuff, so. Yeah. It's fucked up. Yeah, imagine, like, when the Xbox 360 came out because technology was just so yeah. wanted, you know. Motherfuckers caught you and you just got that brand new Xbox 360. <laughs> they whooped your ass in the park line to that shit. Yeah, my dad told me about a story when I was a kid. He was like, yeah, you know, a dude uh, saw a woman. He's like, you know, this and that. His, he wanted to get his son, like, an Xbox for Christmas. And so he just, like, he, like, took it from her. He's like, he had the money for it. He just gave her the money. He's like, you know, he, just, he needed it. And now that I think about it. I got an Xbox for Christmas. <laughs> I, oh. Yeah, okay. Uh, do you think NASCAR is a sport? Not really. Why do you Why do you think that? You're just driving. Okay, so I'm yeah, gonna say I'm gonna, I'm gonna say something that's very explicit, and I just need you to understand that. I mean it. Um. You're fucking retarded. <laughs> what? I mean that to the fullest extent because you you have to train yourself to not fucking die in a car. You know how hard it is to drive. Like you're trained to drive. Yeah. You train to fight. Oh See my god. See the di- god. you train. Oh I mean the difference god. is like your life is like actually more so like. All or nothing on the line. Like, you can get fucked up and knocked out, right? You might be okay. Your brain might be a little fucked up. 20 years from now, they'll know. But, you know, that's hard to tell. If your car flips and hit, it hits a wall and flips and shit, like, a lot of niggas get fucked up from that shit. I, I think it gets the right to be called a fucking sport. Because if you're able to risk your life in it and your your physical health, it should be a sport. Now... I don't want that to be taken out of context where motherfuckers say that playing games and cooking are sports. I mean, cooking kind of is a sport. It's it's kind of an art. That's actually an art. But, you know, like cooking like a chef. You know, chef knives. You got to watch out for them. I'm just going to thumb down that whole fucking thing. Yeah, okay. Like, not even a top 15 sport. Yeah, I'm not saying I was interested in it. I was just saying that it's still a sport, you jackass. We're, we're acknowledging it as sports, though, right? It is a sport. You said it. Not even top 15. It's still a sport because it's on the list. So, do you yeah, believe in magicians? Do you believe in the magic of illusion? No. I do not. See, believe now you're sounding bullshit. really fucking stupid again. <laughs> you I believe mean, that magic bullshit. isn't real, but the magic of illusion is real. I'm just stupid. The, but the magic of illusion is real. What? Yeah, the magic of illusion sound? is real, motherfucker. Illusion. The art of illusion. That's all it is. Okay, magic is illusion. Are you about to illusion. tell me to pick a card? This <laughs> Where are you going with this? <laughs> There you go, motherfucker. Pick a card. Any card. Yeah, no. I mean, it's the idea of illusion, though. It's not really like... They're not doing anything special. They're just doing shit that you would think needs magic to be done. You know? It's like when people used to be like, Why did it flood? God's mad at us. That that type of theory, you know? But it's entertaining. So it can still exist. I mean, like David Blaine, uh, what was his name? David Copperfield. Uh, who is that one guy? The one that could take the punches? Henry. What? Who are you talking about? Maybe it's not a Henry. Maybe it was David Copperfield, but. Uh-huh. Brandon's hilarious. It's an imagination. Houdini. Houdini. It was Houdini. And didn't that nigga die from Don't say that. Houdini's not dead. He's not dead. Tupac's not dead either. 
nor is Biggie. Okay? Okay, we're not gonna tell anybody that, right? It's just you and me talking here, right? Tupac, Tupac, Biggie, or Kelly, who did it? All right. You're all on my secret island. Mine's not that easy. You said what? <laughs> I'm serious, son. It's. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, he probably just disappeared. No, he died. <laughs> he died from like, yeah, no, Pac and Biggie are all my secret. I don't know. With R. Kelly, too. He's not in prison. I bailed him out a while ago. Um, hey, so, how do you feel about the thing? WNBA, the Women's National Basketball of Associations of America in America? A sport America. not many people watch. That they oh. really want to push has a top sport whoa. that's eventually going to get canceled. Wait, whoa. Do you, do you have some facts to back up that up, you know? Brandon, you I've said seen it. games on TV. They're half empty. Mm. Was that pre-coronavirus? They had to get smaller stadiums. They couldn't mm. play in the Ooh. real stadiums. They still like 50,000 So, tickets. do you think they should be paid the same as normal, like, National Basketball Association Players of America and America for America players? <laughs> <laughs> you're retarded. <laughs> First of all, thinking about fuck, you know, you're not selling as many tickets as them. Why should you get paid as them? So they shouldn't be paid the same because they're not bringing they in the can't same bring amount of money. Them. No, yeah. right? Okay. They can get canceled for sure. Is that right? I don't think. I mean, the people college, do support the WNBA. I, mean, I do support I mean, women like, in all sports, but dude, it's just sad that college basketball gets more attention than them. Personally, I feel that since we all believe men and women are equal, that there should be no WNBA. It should just be the NBA. There should be no W. They are going to. There. It should be like if LeBron and his team and the Brandon. Lakers, they could play a woman team. You don't want to see that. I do want to see seriously that. Seriously, you know, I believe see we're. I believe we're all six equal. Six girls go up against these six three grown ass men. Okay. They can't take. They can get paid the hits. same if if they do that. They can get paid the same. Would that I mean, be okay? You can tell them that, and then you're gonna see and be like, "Nah, nah, nah." Would that be okay nah, though? Well, well like, would would it be okay though? Ideally, sure. Like that would be okay if like they get paid the same if like they you know if they could play. I wonder how many of them are gonna actually take that. A lot of them, because I'm pretty sure like the money is good, and they make new friends along the way. They're gonna get destroyed. No, they're not. I have faith in women. So <clears throat> here in Champaign, Illinois, we we uh we hold the the University of Illinois. It's a uh, it's our it's our famous little quote campus end quote. Uh, and there's this there's this little little virus going around called coronavirus. COVID-19. And, uh... There's a, there's testing available to people for free. And, and for, for college students, I believe there's a spit testing. And, uh... What are the other available methods of testing? Do you know? Um, they... It's just, like, spitting or whatever... They, like, put it up your nose. So a nasal swab? Yeah, nasal swab. And then whatever you'd call it where they throw, I think it's like a cough swab or something. something weird. Like called? a tongue swab or some shit yeah, like that? Like, get the, like they scrape the back of your throat? Yeah, that's disgusting. Yeah. How many people actually opted for that, like, having some shit poke them in the back of their throat? Like, wouldn't they gag? You'd be surprised. Like, I, I think I'd gag. I've seen Dana White do... I throw the fuck up. I I almost did. <laughs> like, how do you... You guys are gay. We're not going to say anything about that. So... I don't want a coronavirus test. Mm. But uh, it's for the student and staff, you know. How yeah. do, do you think they should both be allowed the same testing? Yeah. So they're going to be in the same place, man. Yeah. Right. Do you, do you think we all should be allowed that testing, though? If, it's, if, it, if they have enough of it. They don't then. Right, right. So if they don't, so it should. So what? Why? Why should it only be 
I mean, shouldn't that just be accessible to everybody, though? Like, through yeah. health in general? Yeah, it should Like, be. hospitals and such places that give out tests. I think they do that. Hopefully, they I mean, would end up doing that, but I don't think they would. I mean, I haven't. I haven't gotten tested yet, but I, I, I keep my distance and I wear a mask everywhere I go. So, I you know, and I, I clean and I keep myself sanitized daily. So, I I'm really, like... I'm going to take one, and I'm going to just be like, okay, I got it. Because I know it's going to come back and be like, yeah, you have it. You know, and it's very sad because this, this virus is sweeping nations. And it's fucking, it's fucking everybody's lives up. Everybody has been affected by coronavirus. It's like... I would laugh if I had corona, though. I'd have to laugh at you if you got corona. Fair enough. I, I guess I'd have to. It, it, it's I, just I a laugh. Understand. It's like, damn... You know, gotcha. a guy came into my job today. I work at a, I work, I work at a, a place where we make food. <laughs> I work at a restaurant per se, right? And this uh, this guy came in and he didn't have a mask, and I I didn't realize it. I was, I don't know, I wasn't paying too much attention. I wasn't doing my job correctly. I see, I need to do better. So, he uh, he was ordering food. He was ordering three sandwiches, and the guy behind him had a mask, and he was like, hey do you have a mask? You know, the guy didn't work there. So he's like, no, nah. he, he said something. I didn't hear it. And he, uh, he's like, uh, did you see the sign on the door? He's like, yeah, I, I did. And it's something else. And it's just like, man, if I could have gave that guy a free cookie and like some, some free shit, I would have. Like that guy was great. He, he, he stepped in even though I didn't and, and nobody said anything. And that guy like, kind of tried to give him shit because he cared about other people's health. And that's kind of the approach we got to have in, in society. We got to try to help everybody, right? No, yeah, because you got motherfuckers out here throwing parties and shit. Yeah, a bunch of motherfuckers in one place, like, Jesus Christ. And I bet People licking toilets and shit. And... Licking toilet seats and, like, what the fuck is wrong with you? You fucking retard. Why your would parents, you use a toilet seat? If, if anybody's getting corona, it's your dumb ass because you look at the toilet seat. Like, your parents didn't she raise you, right? They seriously still got it. No shit. It's stu- like, wait. Because it's not a gonna do toilet. Shit. You're lucky you didn't catch E. coli, <laughs> motherfucker. You dumb bitch. Very lucky. Well, every motherfucker that licks a toilet should die. If you lick a toilet, you should die. Unless you're a baby. And if you let your baby lick a toilet, something wrong with you. Because you just need your ass whooped. Grown ass people licking toilets. You know what time it is? It's summer, right? And it's it's going into fall soon. And you know what that means? It's kind of already is fall, right? It's, yeah, it's it's going there. It's it's almost there. It's, it's I right around. This time it it's at the back winter. door. It's flu season. Flu season is coming up, but we still got this coronavirus at hand. It's like it's not going away. Make you do a double take. No, yeah, that's why everyone's like 2021, 2022. This flu season about to fuck some shit up for sure. Oh, yeah, like, there is going to be a bunch of people dying. I I can, like, I'm not trying to knock on wood, but I don't want to, I don't want to predict this, but I do see that a lot of people getting sick and then contracting coronavirus from this flu season. It's going to be, it's going to be a bit, even bigger fucking epidemic if, if this does happen, you know. Damn. So nothing else might happen in 2020 but that. And that's still fucking tech. Like, that's going to be very shitty. It can really, like, shit can really get dicey out here for sure. Yeah, I mean, I'm really worried. Uh, we, we just have to try to push through and, and work together as people. Because it's not really, like, it's not a cultural thing now. It's just, like, it's a people thing. We, we all got to abide by these rules and try to help it. We're gonna be honest, we all probably fucking have it. Yeah, have have, had it. have it, have had it, or will get it. I mean, at some point in your life, you will touch this fucking, this fucking, this nasty ass disease. Mm. You will, and it's like you just there's nothing you can do you about don't it. Know if it's you just gotta try to stay healthy, yeah. take supplements, or you know, eat healthy. It just sucks. Your vitamins. Baby dies, your baby good. Your you baby know. Good. People go for the wrong things. Like, they're getting toilet paper and such things that aren't, like, good for your health. They're good for your asshole. And, you know, that's... I like my overall health, not my asshole. Never got the whole toilet paper thing. Yeah, because people are fucking idiots. They're followers. They are. What the fuck is that? Like, I never... For no reason. Like, they I just... didn't get, like, at all. Like, nobody could explain that shit to me. 
Because people are dumb in that society for you. I They're forward. Because we're, we're going to be in a house this long, but I'm like, what? You're okay? Uh, I mean, you know, we just, we got to stay clean. That's all I can say. We got to keep our distance, stay clean, and and stay motivated. People getting lazy during quarantine. I mean, it's not even quarantine anymore. It's really not. I, I just keep saying that. It's really, I think so. Mm, is any place really locked down? I mean, it's going to go back to quarantine soon. Hopefully. I hope it does. I'm, I'm really surprised a lot of places are out. Yeah, I don't understand why there's all these places open up. Like, I understand we all need to pay bills, right? But you really shouldn't be able to shut off our utilities while this epidemic is going on. So, I mean, we should just stay home. Everybody should keep all that shit going for free. I understand, like, that shit's costly. But at the end of the day, we're all people. Yeah, my mom said, I think everyone's staying home. Nobody's fucking staying home. Nobody. Nobody. But anyway, on from that negativity. So, as a as a cisgender man in America, and, and what do you identify as? A man. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah. I, uh, you know, we, we have these common ideas that we see as acceptable between you and me, yeah. but not that, like, a woman could do. Mm-hmm. You know, these double standards. Yeah. So... Why, why do you think we feel these way, this way about these these things? Because, I mean, it's just who, who we're surrounded by and who, and I think it's just because everyone around us has the same with that. I mean, when you're, when you have a group of friends or you have a lot of friends, I mean, you end up, you know, just catch each other's but I, I don't know where to really explain it. Like, per se, like a man I think it, like, sleeping I with a bunch of women is, yeah. is seen as, like, heroic. It's like, that man's a fucking baller. Like, but a woman bitches. doesn't. She's a fucking slut. I think slut. it's because we like women, and it's like, damn. We don't want a woman that's been around. Exactly. That is, but they don't like, want a women, man that's been around. We, like, women and men, they're not, con- we're, we're connecting on the same level. You don't want a guy that's fucking a lot of bitches. We don't want a bitch that's fucking a lot of guys. I mean, some niggas do. Okay, but, like, for the most part, that's what we're both saying. But I mean, like, some people why have... Why are you shuts on this? We're like, why are you going to the phone? It's like, it's just weird. You know? You, yeah. It's like, I can fuck a, a lot of women, and I can see, I can be seen by know. men as okay, but, like, by women, I'll be seen as a hoe. And it's like, if a woman has sex with a bunch of men, then both men and women will see her as a hoe. <clears throat> you know? And, uh... That's the big one. <laughs> let's, let's just... Just to point out something. Slut-shaming... I'm not going to say, like, you should shut slut shame, but let's be real. Slut shaming only hurts people that, I mean, have been sluts. Uh, like, if it's not true, it shouldn't hurt your feelings. I don't I don't understand. Like, if it's, it's not true, then you know it's not true. I don't, don't let it get to you. <laughs> like, people get so, so bummed out over that shit. It's just, it's Very funny. Bummed it's out. Like, yeah. It's like, what, what are you doing? If you, you know the truth, so you ain't even got to explain it. I don't know. <clears throat> so, uh, let's since since we're talking about women, let's, uh, what are some things you uh, what are some things you like? You know, what 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 do you, me, and other guys alike appreciate when women do? You know, like I appreciate when a girl like texts me back and like she she tells me be safe and she shows that she really cares. I mean, they're just, like, not playing for the chase. They're, like, they're showing how they feel. Because, like, come on. Girls like to do that, you know? Right, they girls. like to play games. Girls like, like to give the run. I like, I like people, like, I, I like, yeah, I like when they're direct. Like, if you don't want me, then you can just tell me that. I like, yeah. you know. Um, I'm not really into, you know, I don't like having to, to figure stuff out. I like, I like it to be, like, you know, we, we this and that and, and this and that. I don't like the other, the, the games and shit. It's a little too much. It's just, I don't know. I just always found it weird. Like, what, what the fuck are you Right. Like, what? And it's like, I, I've i always been oblivious to signs when girls like me. And I've always just, I liked it when they just told me that they wanted me. It's like, oh, I appreciate it. But you came on. Play around it. Like, you don't know if they like, like, mm, 
some of them are like so bad with it. Yeah, I mean, everybody's different in their own ways, but I don't think I'm good with it either. I don't know. I mean, <clears throat> it's hard. I can see it. I mean, talking to people can be hard and expressing that you have feelings for them because, you know, the fear of rejection. But you got to get over rejection because somebody's going to reject you. And you might get to reject people if you're lucky. But nine times out of ten, you're going to be the rejectee, the rejected, not the rejector. And, I mean, that's just a that's a fact of life. I mean, you, you shouldn't want to be able to reject nobody because, you know, that kind of that breaks heart. But it, it builds character, so it's equal. And you break even at the end of the day. You know, I, I appreciate, like, a healthy sex life, too. To my healthy sex life. I mean, like, honestly, like... Like, what, what you saying? Four, four or five times a week? What? Four or five times a week? <laughs> I mean, like, twice a day? Twice? Yeah, like, oh. like, one when we get up in the morning, and once before we go to sleep. Or three times a day, and it's like the, the second time... Is after we get off work, right? Because, you know. And then, boom, before we go to sleep. One you more time. never just say three times a day. Why? On that Nikki. Nikki, that was like, I need to be fucked four times. I'm like, what the I fuck? mean, that's understandable. We all have our, our needs, all right? Okay? You're so serious. Okay. <laughs> what the fuck you want me to say? I mean, we all have sexual needs that need to be. No, so, I mean. Right. Like so, when people are like talking about their relationship, shit, I'm just like, if no, if that your little significant, what the fuck you want to call it? If they're not satisfying you sexually, what are you doing? Yeah, I mean, their ass? if they can't satisfy you, I mean, at least talk to them, like communicate first and let them know, like, hey, let's try something else, and let's. You're not making me happy. <laughs> you're not making me, you know. Yeah, so. You haven't hit that thing yet. You haven't done it how I need it done. Mm. You know? I haven't pounded it. Haven't rearranged it. So, you know, rearranged the interior. Some of those are hurt. They, 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 they had that talk and they're like, damn. Just been doing it wrong. It'd be like that. Yeah, I mean, at least communication about it, a healthy sex life. You don't have to, like, have sex with me three times a day, but like you know, two times will suffice. <laughs> I mean, we see how a lot of couples fail nowadays. Just communication, maybe. right? Yeah, and they start cheating on one another, and it's like I don't, I don't like that. I, I don't. I feel like it if you have to you. cheat on me, just break up with me, and do what you're gonna yeah. do. Like we can still be friends after that, right? Yeah. But like if you cheat on me, we can't be friends. You burn my bridge and this and that. Like I'm gonna have some malice towards you. I'm gonna be mad. Straight to cheating. Right. So it's like you know, but. So it is August 24th. Mm, I feel like you're about to say the 28th. And it's, uh, it's, it's a couple months from now, it's going to be time for them, uh, them elections. Oh, yeah. Elections? Are you ready for them? I am not. I'm not going to be able to do the, the voting. I don't feel like voting. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I'm going to invest any time in that. I don't like any of the candidates. At all. They're all kind of goofy to me. They're just puppeteers with hands up their assholes. I making just them have sing. no clue on who's going to be the president. Do you really care, though? No, yeah, I, really. I mean, I never really gave a fuck. I mean, in the... I mean, <clears throat> we can sit here right now and say that we don't. I mean... Ultimately, I mean, the person that does, they run, our, you know, they run our country, so they kind of matter. Right, because they can fuck our shit up. All the way. They can kill us, even. Like, they could get us bombed by another country from starting some shit. So, our best bet was, like, to pick somebody good. But, you know, America can't come together in unity and pick somebody they like. And, yeah. you know, because we're not all on the same page. We don't all like the same people. And that's that's fair. We're all different. Individuals, different strokes for different folks, man. Quote that. So, you know... But uh, voting, like, I think they're going to have to, I don't know if they're going to vote from home or what they're going to, I think they're going to try to not make that uh, available. Mm. Make you got to come down and vote. That's going to take forever. Right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, but take time that shit. Uh, Hopefully. I don't know. 
know, they, they'll figure it out. It's coming soon, though. Like, damn. Who's going to be the president? In due time, in due time. But it's not going to be Kanye. Please. <laughs> Please, if not Kanye's Kanye. not dead. He's on my secret island with Tupac and Biggie and R. Kelly. <laughs> I'm just so glad you just, like, have... Three pretend dead names and it's just R. Kelly <laughs> just on the right there. <laughs> what the is he? What is he get to me? Are you not dead? I mean, yeah. Oh, are you protected? None of them are dead. None of them are dead. Kanye's not dead. Right. But you Biggie's said not dead. Pac's not dead. They're all on my secret Pac island. Pac and are dead. No, they're not. They're on my secret island shooting dice right now, nigga. They're on my island right now shooting dice. And you too. And I heard that bullshit you said earlier. <laughs> you got him off my Yeah, bro. I'm no. him out. I saw what he was going through, bro. And he's not in prison, bro. I didn't want them fucking. He's not the homie. What are you talking about? You heard the music he was making? Look, bro. You heard that shit. That was get down music. He was talking about fucking somebody's auntie. It be like that. I mean, he was talking about fucking somebody. He was trying to fuck somebody's mom, grandma, and auntie. And then he wanted the young daughter, which is a problem. <laughs> but, I mean, when when you're making a hitch like that, you, you you know, you get to fuck a mom, grandma, auntie, sister, even a brother if you wanted to swing that way. <laughs> I mean, when you are Kelly, you get to fuck who you want. They, they be trying to fuck you. And you just got to be like, no, I don't want you. No, I don't want you. Yes, I want you. And I mean, he just didn't make the right decision. <laughs> no he, shit. He, he went to the fucking, the, the playgrounds looking for people <laughs> instead of fuck. But it's okay. I got him rehabilitating at my special shit little island. Them, man. He's still with some kids oh, and shit. Shh, shit. Shh, Michael Jackson there too. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Jackson is on my secret island too. You know what, bro? That would make, that would make. All the sense in the world that R. Kelly and Michael Jackson are in the same place. <laughs> they don't know where it is. So, let's talk about, let's jump back to the cinema. Fucking up. There's a shit called CGI. Do you All know right. what that means? I don't know what it stands for. Computer generated images. I know yeah. what it does though, doesn't it? Like, it's that shit Thanos is. That's yeah. CGI. So, and I mean, like, you know, the skies and such. Thing. Yeah, because you know, it's just Josh Brolin yeah, wearing Josh like Brolin padding and, and then like mocap. Yeah. yeah, it's nice. It's it's digital. Wrong. The yeah. shit, it's become way more like than what it was back in the day. Like, it was I tell you, very shitty. Like, when we were children, mm. like, children now have got it way better. Like, now. They really tried back then. It was like. Disappointing. I'll kick the shit out of these kids. I fucking hate children mm-hmm. now. They, this new generation is a bunch of fucking pussies. They just... They're spoiled. Ignorant. Yeah, no. It's... I don't understand. Do you, do you like CGI in movies or do you prefer practical effects? Practical effects. So, like... I don't know. Like, the CGI sometimes looks good. No, I just don't think it looks good all the time. Right, yeah. So, like... CGI is nice here and there. Like, if you, like, use it sometimes to fill in little gaps. But I like practical effects and realer effects because it's more authentic and you don't have to do as much cutting. Yeah. It's like you just do the the makeup and the prosthetics and stuff. And it's like, like, Jeepers Creepers is known originally for their, uh, like, their makeup. Because that guy used to have to get on, he used to have to sit there for, like, four to, like, eight hours a day. Four, four to like seven hours a day getting fucking makeup done yeah and it's like over time makeup has become more easier and better to make or some you know it's become more improved over time so you know it doesn't take as long and it looks better but it does look way better though right but i mean the cgi is where the movie like, it's pretty much in every movie well I wouldn't say every movie well yeah I mean makeup it depends on who you get it from I guess I don't think they all have to use the same makeup artists and stuff but oh yeah it's a I mean when it just comes to movies they're just deaf with producers writers you know people that do CGI all that shit fucking backup stunts Right, I mean, yeah, I like real ones. Like, Jackie Chan, Tom Cruise, I'm pretty sure, like, Johnny Knoxville, they all do their own stunts. Yeah, they so. show Tom Cruise doing his own stunt. Yeah, he's, he's crazy, though. That guy's in Scientology and shit. He's, 
he's, he's crazy. I'm not. I don't want to get shot, so I'm not gonna like say their name again. But those mm. people, them people, wow, them niggas crazy. He's done stunts in all his movies. The dude has like over forty movies, I believe. Like, jeez. I mean, yeah. Sometimes you got to do that. He's shit. fifty-eight. He says he gonna do it till he's fifty-eight. 16. Yeah. Tom Cruise ain't 58, nigga. You is capping. Tom Cruise ain't no damn 58, boy. You out your damn mind. He's been acting since he was 16. You ever seen Outcast or Outsiders, whatever the fuck they are? Outcast. Oh, I, I swear it was He Outcast. was like a teenager. Yeah, it was whatever the fuck they were called. Yeah, Outcast, yeah. Hey, I mean, he is. There's a reason he's one of the highest paid actors. Ryan Reynolds really stole second place from him. I mean, uh, those are just people that know how to manage their money, right? Yeah. Those are just people. Those are people you can look up to because they know how to manage money and not go broke. Like MC Hammer, you can't really look up to that guy. How do you feel about Adam Sandler, you know? I don't know. I was just thinking about this over the weekend. Adam Sandler versus Tom Hanks. Who thinks the bigger, better actor? Hmm. A better actor? Uh, probably Tom Hanks. But more notable or like memorable probably would be Adam Sandler. Because he always has a lot of comedies. And it's like comedies, comedies really everybody good loves a good comedy. Like nobody yeah. wants to, no, not everybody wants to see a fucking depressing movie. No, yeah. Like everybody, I know like, you know, actors usually vary from mm-hmm. different genres when they make movies. But Adam Sandler is known for making a lot of funny ass movies. So, yeah, people are gonna know when you say Adam Sandler, it's like, oh, that's uh the water boy, this yeah. and that, and uh grown ups and this and that and it's like, yeah. It's I'm Chuck just been it's like just... Larry and Chuck or something like that. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah. So I mean when you say Tom Hanks, it's like I I know who Tom Hanks is, but some yeah. people don't know who Tom Hanks is because he's not as Notable to them because he makes more serious movies, more serious movies. Have you seen uh, Uncut Gems by Adam Sandler? I have. That what was a wild ass ending. That really like, wow. I mean, unexpected. You know, like the most unexpected thing I've seen all year was not Uncut Gems, but Becky with Kevin James, that fat, lovable motherfucker. <laughs> That wait, that, that, what? So it, it he, he plays a convict who escapes prison. Mm-hmm. He's a he's a neo Nazi, I believe, or he's part of the Aryan Brotherhood. So yeah, they uh, him and his friends, his sons. That's what he calls his companions. They're they're his sons. He planned the escape and they escape and such, and they go to this house. Where a man... It's that movie we saw where you got, like, stabbed in the eye with a key. Uh, and that shit came out, so they had to cut it off. Man, that was nasty. It was nasty. But that was some real shit. You didn't expect Kevin James to do that, though. I didn't expect Kevin James to be a fucking neo-Nazi in that movie. Like, you, you ever seen American History X? No. You know who Ed Norton is? The original Hulk? Well, he's oh, not the original. Yeah. yeah. Well, he he played it. Yeah, that whole yeah. Ed Norton. Yeah, so he he. This is like a movie from nineteen ninety nine. He played like a neo Nazi guy. Mm-hmm. It was actually some serious shit. It was some heat, but you know. Yeah, I wanted that guy to be Hulk a couple of times. Yeah, but stuff doesn't always pan out how you want. So I thought that one was decent. Mm-hmm. I mean, why well, movies are just decent? Right, I mean, that's yeah, that's that's really what I, I've said over this over the years that movies are only being okay and they're not really outstanding as they used to be. Like as a little kid, movies used to fucking astound me, and it's like even then I could go back and watch those same movies as as an adult, and those movies are still pretty fucking good, and like, they I, they give me that feeling inside. But I'm now just, they're just lacking. Not going back to watch Endgame. I'm not gonna. Yeah, I was just watch Infinity War. It's more and more, you know. You've never seen Black Panther. I haven't. You being a bitch, you won't go see it. No, I just fucked that movie. He said fuck that. I thought Black Panther was surprisingly good. Like, I'm all about black unity, right? But, like, 
that was like that was a progressive movie. That wasn't really a not I mean they did that because they wanted to get okay with the times. Just like Marvel like if they would have done it back in like two thousand thirteen like if they would have did it back in twenty thirteen, right? Uh-huh. I would have been fine. I would have went and saw it. But now that they're doing it when like all this other bullshit is going on, like they're doing it to like get on people's good sides and that's where I don't wanna like then then when you saw like all the support that black people had, it was like they went out there in fucking dashikis and African African clothing to fucking support it and I'm just like You see what Disney's done I mean, trading in actors for female actors or having like an LGBTQ character or like you know, I mean let's just put it out there how it is. I mean it it's so it's I mean they're being progressive. Yeah. Which I can respect, but some things are just better left how they were. Like, I don't think, like, I don't think Stan Lee was writing comics. He was like, well, I think there should be this man who's not happy with his life. So, you know, he becomes a woman and then he becomes a superhero. Like, I don't think he wrote a comic about a transgender. <laughs> Superhero. I don't think he just. He might have. I'm not gonna deny that he. He. I. I just. I. I find it highly doubtful. But I mean, I don't know much about Stanley. He could have known. Just in my movies, there's. There's not been that many movies I would just go back and watch. Edge of Tomorrow is probably the one movie that I've just gone back and watched so many times. I love that movie. Isn't that where they keep dying? Yeah. It's like they restart and shit. I have yet to see that. I wanted to see that, and I kept forgetting about it. It wasn't. I don't know why. I just always liked the the live, die, repeat thing. I thought that was so cool. So, talking about living, dying, there was a shooting recently between two famous people. One is Tory Lanez, which is a, a man, and the other is Meg Thee Stallion, which is, 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 is a woman named Megan who is a stallion. <laughs> she has a beautiful style I knew you were going to say that With a flowing nice mane Beautiful You sexy as fuck you Probably wouldn't go there to do that But okay So He, uh, he shot her Oh no he sh- He shot her bang, And bang. She, she, she outed him Recently for shooting um, She said she was scared to come out I bet you were I mean that motherfucker shot her twice I mean I don't think she was scared to come out She was trying to save him from being ridiculed and maybe deported because yeah, they were talking yeah, about trying to deport that. him for some reason. That's who. I mean, it makes sense. I mean, you're not from here. You're Canadian. So, like, if they deport Drake, he'd be kind of sad. <laughs> Frank is all his friends here. Niggas ain't gonna, gonna be sick as fuck. He's gonna have to fly over America. <laughs> Can't stop in. Gotta fly through. Boy, damn, he really shot her. Shot her in the feet. But she got shot. Why it, damn. it hurt. I, I don't want to get shot in the foot. And her, she's healed up fine. So I mean, like damn, but like they, you might die from that. Like what? The fuck? Yeah, I have sex for her. Um. <laughs> so the Golden State Killer. Like for so long. What is that about? Tell me about that. What do I know? So Alan Golden State, um, so he was a raper and a killer. He'd go into people's houses. I don't know how many exact. I think it was twelve rapes, maybe thirty murders. You gonna have to look it out. But I did. I do remember a story of him like um. Going in the house, and so he'd have him. Was it knife or a gun? Something like that. But, like, when he'd go up there with the woman, he'd have the man on the ground. Plates on his back. I think he'd stack him to, like, I think it'd be, like, seven. If he heard, you know, heard a knife, all go kill them both. It's fucked up. But his name is Joseph James D'Angelo Jr. Murdered 13, 50 plus raped. 120 plus burger. Murder. Robbed. I'll just say robbed. Yeah, they just got him. When did they just get him? 
2018. How do you get away with stuff for that long? He was a cop, I believe. Nice. That's really the nigga we just be letting <laughs> these niggas in, man. How do you do it? I mean, dude, this was forever. Like, what the fuck? What compels you as a person to do those types of things? To rape and kill others on your will? I don't know. It's like, I I don't understand. I'm like... I really can't, like, I I couldn't tell you. Like, he just raped them or he kidnapped them. Just kill people. Robbed hella people. Like, man. People ain't shit. Yeah. And they're not getting any better now. Still worse. I mean, I don't expect people to really change. I don't expect racism to go away. I mean, racism is kind of necessary. No, I mean it's it, it's not necessary. It's just there's just a reason the world isn't perfect. We just look at people differently anyway. I mean, I, I think there's just a reason why nobody or anything is perfect. You gotta you gotta have these things. You gotta have these serial killers, these rapists, these crazy just shit out here. I, I guess that's just how it's gotta be. I mean, no, I don't think they need to be out here. I think or they should be murdered, yet. but... Oh, I, hey, uh, for saying that, I, I guess it's terrible to say that, but I 100% agree, especially pedophiles. Yeah, pedophiles, rapists, yeah, those guys, they all got their own special place. I don't believe there's a redemption after that. It's just... People are just so, so evil. Yeah. To the core. And I wonder just like what makes them so evil. Could be childhood trauma. Seems to mostly be that and that's sad. Yeah, I mean... You Fuck can't really child. blame that on there, on that though. You get, you gotta take responsibility for your own actions. Who really bounces back out the fucking childhood? I mean, it's not about where you come from. It's about where you're going. <laughs> but some, it's like damn. You bro. can only write the future. You can't rewrite the past. So like, yeah, you you might have had been gang raped multiple times as a okay, child. Okay, that's where I'm but, but, like, but you can bounce back from that, right? You don't have to do drugs and sell your life away. You can come back. It's not going to be easy. It's going to take a, a minute. Right, but that that doesn't happen mean, that you can't be 40. Ready for that. You can't be 40 well, or 50. Course. No, yeah. I'm saying, once you get, once you hit adulthood, you have to suck that shit up and and find out your own ways to deal with that without fucking other people up. People fail to figure that out, that you're responsible for your actions. Regardless, if whatever reason you have, you are responsible for your actions and and nobody wants to take responsibility. That's how it be, man. Any last words, Brandon? Don't kill anybody. Uh, have me on Instagram at Brando Breezy, B R A N D O B R E E Z Y. It's your boy. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Had fun with Jimmy Flick on the episode, and we're always coming up with new content and new things for you guys. Episode number ten. I'm your host, Jakai Snickerson. Brando Breezy. We're out.